Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. It is such a stunning still evening here. It's very late July. The sun is just about to set and August is literally just around the corner. Where did that come from? If you feel like the sowing season is over, it isn't. There's a lot of things to sow. This video is about 10 different crops or 10 different groups of crops that you can sow this month. But before we start, I have a little bit of an announcement to make. A lot of you ask for my top varieties of particular things and I've created a page where I outline all of my default staple varieties for all of the annual and biannual crops that I grow in the garden, including herbs and flowers. And it features varieties that I've tried, tested and tasted and I want to make sure that they perform well, that they're resilient and they have good taste. And as of this week, I've relaunched my newsletter over on Substack, where I've named it Hughes Garden Journal, a little bit similar to Hughes Garden Diaries. And what it is is a weekly newsletter of tips, advice, including a what to sow list dedicated to roughly zone six to nine. And I've got frost dates in there as well. So on every Wednesday, so you have a few days to prepare before the weekend, I'm gonna be sharing this newsletter, which is just jam packed with my top growing tips and advice. Now for the 10 most productive crops to sow in the month of August, every single one of these I am sowing in August. And so this is the list I've made for myself and hopefully you'll find it useful as well. This list follows no particular order whatsoever. And so I'm gonna start off with carrots. Carrots are such a lovely thing to direct sow in the first half of August. And that's with me thinking about a, a potential frost date for mid-October. Carrots are somewhat hardy. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can get a nice, a decent, you know, they're gonna be smaller sized carrots, but you can sow them quite thickly or quite generously. And you can get a nice harvest in mid to late autumn, or you can extend it by putting a hoop bed over the top of of that bed and you can be harvesting carrots right throughout winter and into early spring which is what I did here in the self-sufficiency garden. The tops of carrots are edible. In fact, I've been using the tops of carrots every single week to make a kind of a chimichurri inspired salsa that I, I really like putting on top of roast veg and as a dip and it is so tasty and I'll, I'll be sharing uh, recipes as well in the newsletter because I really like cooking. Next up is radish and with radish as well, you have a lot of options. The lovely thing about August is that you have two categories of radish to grow. You have the summer radish and you have the winter radish. So summer radish, you can think about all of the nice colors like you know the pops of red, but you've also got things like watermelon radish, which looks really cool. But also you have winter radish. So those are things like mooli, also known as daikon radish. Those grow huge, they are so productive and I really like growing them. The other one that I really like is Spanish black round winter radish. This is really productive, it's pretty tough. So I was harvesting this over uh, December and into early January and it is such a lovely flavoured radish. What you're gonna find is that in August, there's a lot of gaps that are suddenly gonna emerge in your garden. It's natural because we're starting to harvest lots of things. I know that my fennel, my field beans, uh, my peas, for example, are uh, all actually gonna be going out within the next week or two. And so that means that gaps are gonna emerge. And so that's why I'm doing a lot of sowing to make sure that I can fill those gaps as much as possible. Something like summer radish you can put out in clumps, but what I prefer to do with winter radish is towards the end of August, I like to sow that directly. Another thing that I really prioritise earlier on in this month alongside carrots is also beetroot. I love beetroot because it just tastes so good. Something like the golden beetroot, like the flavour, the sweetness is absolutely amazing. And you're going to get decent sized roots before winter. What you might find if is you could overwinter them in a hoop bed, but sometimes you can get like voles or mice eating them. So it's probably best to lift them and store them. But yeah, beetroot is so tasty. And you can also treat the leaves a bit like chard, essentially. Now I am gonna put chard and I'll group perpetual spinach in with that as another crop. So chard, it grows so well. You have two kinds of harvest. You have the, the leaf and the stem. You can do the exact same thing with beetroot. However, what I would recommend is only eating the beetroot leaves 
when you start to harvest your beetroot. Because the, the daylight hours are starting to decrease, you want those plants to be photosynthesizing as much as possible. You want as much energy going into root production. And so if you're taking those leaves, you're gonna be slowing down the production of roots. And so growing some chard in the meantime, where you can get those leaves, is gonna be a nice way to, to supplement that and to kind of spread the load and still give you a lot of food. One of my jobs tomorrow here in this garden is to plant out some Napa cabbage or Chinese cabbage. That is a lovely thing to grow. It grows really quickly. It is very productive. I was getting some heads well over a kilo in weight last year in just a few weeks of growth. And this is something you can very much start off in modules and then transplant them whenever a slightly larger gap emerges. So if you do harvest a clump of beetroot that you've sown earlier this year, you could then put a Chinese cabbage in that place. One of the top ways that food advertisers market their food is they use keywords like crunch because it is such a satisfying thing. And that is why I really love pak choy. Pak choy is another beautiful crop that you can start to sow in August. You can either do it directly or you can start it off in modules and transplant. But it has that lovely kind of succulent style crunch that you can have raw. I will chop it up into salads. But my absolute favorite way to enjoy pak choy by an absolute country mile is in a stir fry. You kind of cook it so the leaves start to wilt. It wilts around the outside, but the inside still retains that crunch. And it is such a lovely experience. I love to grow in a polyculture style. So as you can see around me, I've got lots of different things growing in quite a small space. And sometimes you have smaller gaps where something like a Chinese cabbage or maybe even a pak choy wouldn't quite fit. But something that would fit in those kind of gaps is spring onions. And spring onions are another lovely thing to start off this month. I would recommend starting them off in modules first, but then transplanting them and being able to enjoy those in autumn is really nice. You can also move them under cover, but I'll come on to that in a little bit. Now, of course, I am going to mention salad leafy greens, and I am going to group them together as one category or include them as one crop. And so you've got things like your lettuce, spinach, mustard greens, but also an absolute shout out to rocket. Now is a lovely time to do rocket. If you kind of sow it earlier in the season, very often it can bolt and that's that's no problem at all. The flowers are really delicious and really edible but Rocket is a lovely one. Another couple of options to throw into the salad leafy greens mix is to grow amaranth for the leaves. So amaranth is, I've got a plant growing here. So these smaller ones work really, really nicely. And another one that I'm growing that I love this year is called tree spinach, or as I like to call it, glitter spinach. And it looks fantastic. You can grow it for a nice leafy crop still. There's still time. Another little grouping I suggest is more of the annual herbs. And I'm growing seashow this year. And that is a nice little one to, to put out. But in the slightly hardier category is gonna be dill, and coriander or cilantro. These are crops that I start off in modules and I grow them on and then whenever I see an opportunity of a gap or it's kind of getting to that stage of the year where if there's just half a gap, I will try and squeeze something in and see what happens. And coriander and dill are wonderful for that. And now more of a winter staple, which is kale. The, the issue with some winter vegetables is that they need quite a long lead time to develop to then give you food over winter. But something like kale, you can start that off now. And again, you can raise these up in modules or pots and transplant them actually quite a bit later in like September or even into early October, you can be planting those in and around the garden. What I've got at the moment in one litre pots are larger kale plants that I'll pot on again, and I'm growing these quite big, and then I'm gonna put them where the tomatoes currently are in the polytunnel. Now, what you can do is with plants that are growing outside and you kind of get to late autumn, early winter, you can actually lift these plants up and put them in a polytunnel or in a hoop bed to improve the productivity of them. And if you wanna find out more about this, I have made a video, it's a little bit old now, but the advice still stands and it's one of my absolute favorite things to do. And it essentially turns a polytunnel or hoop bed into a jungle over winter.